Ladies and gentlemen, we are formally under a lightning delay. All team and crew personnel should be out of the stadium at this time. Our attention to those who are injured. Please evacuate the scene. Do not have anyone in stand during the scene and stay away. We will let you know as soon as we hold this mission. Currently, the 10 minutes remain in the hold. Thank you for your attention to this situation. attention. All stadium personnel need to be out of the stadium until we call for each step aboard. At this time, I need everybody out of the stadium. That includes those persons who are still in the seats. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Sir Weather spread has passed, and we are now resuming pre-game activities. University officials are still monitoring the weather conditions, and should any delay be necessary, you will know immediately. You may now enter the stadium. Thank you for your continued patience. Think that if you parked in the south parking lot behind the south bend, you need to move your vehicle. They are going to be using that parking lot for fireworks for the baseball game. So again, if you park in the south parking lot next to the baseball stadium, past the south bend, you need to move your vehicle. It will have fireworks all over it. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Second and Field at a Stand Broadband Stadium. Tonight's game features the Bearcats at Southwest Texas and your UTPC Fighting Falcons. If you pay attention to a game you watch now, they'll listen to our UTPD Falcon play-by-play -play on the LSD Digital Network website. You can find the link to the broadcast on our UTPD website. Thanks for your support for UTPD football. Join us this Thursday, September 8th at 7 p.m. on campus for a cocktail reception and action as part of the Pursuit, a UTPD athletic fundraiser event. Tickets are available to purchase on our website at utpdfalcons.com. The laws of the state of Texas prohibit smoking in all areas of a stand broadband stadium. Please help us comply with this law by not smoking inside the gates of a stand broadband stadium. Thank you for your cooperation and consideration of those around you. Fans are concession areas are located on the concourse areas of the stadium. Be sure to stop by and get all your favorite game day snacks and drinks. You can keep up to date with the Falcons on the uh, Falcon Athletic Team's website by visiting the official Athletic Team website, utpdfalcons.com, or download our UTPD Athletic app. It's your stop for the latest Falcons athletic news and scores. Also, follow the Falcons on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the UTPD Falcons Athletic. Don't forget to tweet about your game day experiences using the official UTPD athletic hashtag, Falcons Up.
Yes. The captain for the New Green Bear Jacks are number four, Colton Smith. Okay. And number 10, Cooper Collins. Captains for your Falcons, number three, Dylan Graham. Number five, MJ Ling. Well, here we are, number the first UT Permian Basin game of the season seven, at a Stown Broadband Stadium Robinson. as the UT Permian Basin Falcons are hosting the Southwest Baptist Bearcats. See our captains in the middle of the field doing the point coin flip. UTPB won the toss and they're going to defer to the second half, their option. And looks like the Bearcats will be receiving the ball and, def and defending the north end. The Falcons will be kicking off from right to left on your screen. So, what do you think, Jerry? Well, I think we welcome to a Stan Broadband Stadium for the UTPB Sewell family of dealerships. Home of the game of weeks presented by Trans Global Productions. I'm Jerry Lovell with Kyle Hebert, Clay Kennedy. This, this Lone Star Conference game between UTPB Falcons and the Southwest Baptist Bearcats. We're about ready to go. Give you a couple of keys, I think, tonight, Jerry, since this is the first game of the season. Uh, I think one of the things the uh, Falcons will probably be trying to do tonight is get Dylan Graham, their quarterback, very comfortable in the ball game. It's his first start for the Falcons uh, here during the season. And we're going to have the national anthem. Another key tonight, Jerry, for the Falcons, not only to get Dylan Graham settled into the ball game, get him some rhythm, give him some easy throws to and reads to uh, make. I think the offensive line's got to gel a little bit tonight for UT Permian Basin. They've got some new guys on the uh, offensive line starting tonight. I think that defense is going to have to establish itself early. We're playing a team that we don't know a lot about other than what they've gotten off of film, uh, the Southwest Baptist Bearcats um, you're going to have to adjust on the fly and make yourself make those adjustments that uh, you need to make in order to uh, stop this Bearcat offense. Sounds like it might be a plan. Uh, you, you know, you just have to look at things the way they are and when, when you have a couple of guys that uh, do a great job well you got a great great football team let's see back deep C is going to be let me check him out here a minute kicking off of the Falcons number 31 <laughs> Carson Robert it's 20 number 30 Abel Carter and uh, number, number 23 Jordan Kent Jordan back Kent. deep to receive for the Bearcats Carson Roberts. Carson Roberts kicking off. He put that thing back in the end zone. That's not, that is Carson Roberts, the Permian graduate. The out the back touchdown. of the end zone, and the Bearcats will have the first possession of the game first and 10 from the 25-yard line. 
Uh, you know, this is the first time for me to see these boys and uh, uh, to see an actual college game here in the Permian Basin. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. For the Bearcats, ball to 25. Cooper Callis, the uh, ball carry, or the uh, quarterback. They go into a shift, and number 23, the ball carrier. And that will be George Jordan the Kent. Brendan Smith, number seven, Smith made the uh, stop on the play. First down run for the Bearcats off their left side. Ooh. Good hit from the linebacking core there. Number 14 for UTPB on the stop, Darian Forge. We have seen Darian play the last couple of years for the Falcons. He's a 5'11", uh, 220-pound senior from M Mesquite, Texas. Played at West Mesquite High School. Bearcats at the 50-yard uh, line. Ball went way high in the air there. I, I, I think it was uh, uh, flipped off of the uh, center. No gain on the play, so it'll be a third down and three. EJ Gisa, yeah. the defensive lineman, 6'2", 300-pound senior from Newly American Samoa on the tackle. Gallus back. Up to Abel Carter. Carter falls Carter short of that there. first. Down. No, they did get the first down. I Captain thought he was uh, tripped up uh, back at the uh, 47. First and ten for the Bearcats. It'll be first and ten now for the Bearcats at the 45 yard line. Number 30, of the Falcons. 34, J Jalon Rockamore from McKinney, Texas, on the tackle. But not, as Jerry said, before they did get the first down for the Bearcats. Back to pass and gets it away, but it was knocked down. Pass is incomplete. Instead of number six, Preston Carson. Good coverage by Antoine Tanner. Second down and 10. 5'10", 180 pound sophomore defensive back from Antioch, California on the play. Second and 10 now from the 45 of the Falcons. Yeah, let's change the uh, method they're gonna use. He throws a little flat pass to number 23. Jordan Kent, and he clears for the first down, I believe. Number seven on the tackle, Andre Robinson, it says, the defensive back from Orange, New Jersey, making the play for the Falcons. They did get a first down at the Falcon 35-yard line. Catalyst and Cooper are back. Oh, my goodness. Oh, lost on the play of a couple of yards. They brought the house there, Jerry, on a blitz. Watch our Trans Global Productions instant replay. That's just the defensive end coming off the, off the ball there. I believe that was number five, Frank Mulipola. 6'4", 265-pound sophomore from Pago Pago, American Samoa, making the play. He's playing defensive end for the Falcons. Catalyst is going to be a keeper than he 
decides to throw the ball out at 10. And uh, Abel Carter comes up with the ball. There is a penalty mark here, however. This is going to be a late hit out of bounds. Jerry Walker, Trans Global Productions Instant Replay. Pressure, good pressure by UTPB. Did not keep him contained in. And there's the hit right there. I think it's going to be a personal foul, late hit, unnecessary roughness. Yep, roughing the passer against the Falcons. And that'll give them a first down for the Bearcats as they move the ball down to the 12 yard line. And Callis takes the ball. Looking around, and he finds him a man, and he. They're, they're, they're going to call defensive holding or pass interference down here. Watch our Trans Global Productions instant replay. You can see the contact happening right there towards the end of the play. They're going to believe there's going to be an automatic first down, be first and goal for the Bearcats from the Falcon two-yard line. The ball be placed at the two-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Bearcats. Kelly brings them back, and they're getting ready to roll. Hands the ball off to Abel Carter, and Carter gets in for the score. Number 30, Abel Carter. Our running the right in between the tackles there. Jerry, as they put the first points of the ball game on the board, I'm talking about the, pair, the, the uh, Bearcats. A good starting drive for them, and they'll have to make some adjustments. I'm talking about the Falcons over here on the sideline as they get off the field after this extra point attempt. Logan, uh, Logan uh, Turner's kick is up and it is good so we've got 1104 making his first quarter and it's the Bearcats seven and the Falcons zero the scoring summary is brought to you by first basic credit the Bearcats scored a two-yard touchdown by number 30 Abel Carter scoring drive took eight plays 75 40 yards taking three minutes and 56 seconds off the clock Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. And uh, at 11.04, uh, the uh, Bearcats come up with that touchdown. Welcome, uh, welcome back to the st uh, stadium. It, uh, Cooper Callis did a pretty good job, I felt like, when he uh, uh, made the, what would you call that? I, I guess you would just say that he, his plan was really pr pretty good, and they just marched down real fast and 
and they're they're a lead already in the ball game. And Back deep number five, Mike Lee. Well, yeah. they won the line of scrimmage, Jerry. That's one thing you do on that first drive. You want to you're going to script your plays. Most coaches script their first ten or fifteen plays, and they must have done that there and seen some things on film that they could do to the Falcon defense. And now the Falcon offense has to come out and establish themselves in the uh, in the ball game. I think we're going to see Dylan Graham at quarterback, number three. We're going to see number 33, Nate Tilford, as the running back. Yes, he's out there at running back. Wide receivers, we'll see MJ Link, number five. Tim Wiggins, number nine. Marcus Molina, number two. Gunnar Epsick, number 13. And Shamar Davis, the Midland Lee product at number 85. We'll do the offensive line here after this play. So Dylan takes a snap. Drops it off to, to uh, Nathan uh, Tilford. Nate Tilford, the ball game. Offensive line at center, 76. Xavier Orta, a sophomore. The right guard, number 65, Dawson Reynolds, a sophomore, red, red shirt sophomore, I should say. Left guard is number 77, Ra Raymond Diaz, a sophomore. Graham and is looking to pay, throw a pass, and he's completed to number 13. Gunnar Epsick. I don't care what kind of... Gunner did a good job of slipping a tackle there to get up the field for a first down. First and 10 for the uh, Falcons. Still for the uh, ball carrier. Tackles on the finish the offensive game. line, Jerry. The tackles are number 67, Pessy Savea, a senior, and number 72, Jawan Callines. A senior also from Portsmouth, Virginia. Nathan Tilford, the uh, ball carrier, once again, he seems Still to be the, the uh, workhorse for him already. And he Davis. takes the ball out to the 20, make that the 30, I'm sorry, 32 yard line. 38 yard. 38. Third and five. This is a big conversion for the Falcon offense already. They're going to keep this drive going. Press coverage on the outside. Well, they're looking to pass, and the pass is complete, and he's good for the first down uh, near the 50-yard uh, line. This is a little search route. We're going to see our Trans Global Productions instant replay. The back go through and just find an open spot. Their linebackers playing deep in zone. Good pitch and catch. Good first down for the Falcons. Yeah, Tilford just uh, was uh, waiting a little bit there, and he waited and did uh, his job just like he's supposed to do. We got another first down inside the 30-yard at the 28-yard line That's for the Falcons. 11, Good post pattern the there by the down. Falcon receiver. Taken down by Kellen Curtis, a sophomore. They got the triples out on the right, and uh, Dylan's going to try to run with the ball. Graham, he didn't get much uh, yardage there. The ball Pressure here. off the Falcon like offensive five. right side caused that sack. Actually, I don't believe it's a sack. Yep, they're going to make it second and 11, so it is a one-yard loss. Falcon offensive line has got to adjust to what the stunts Graham. are seeing. Graham hands it off once again to Nathan Tilford. Tilford makes it inside the 25 at the 24-yard line. Running hard right now. That'll be a third down now for the Falcons. Might be two down territory here, Jerry, possibly what they get here. Dylan's going to put it in the air, and he has overshot his uh, his receiver in the end zone. He, he, held. he was covered pretty good. Yeah. So We're going to see a field goal attempt here by Carson Roberts. That was a, uh, intended for Dante Hayes, number 83 for the Falcons. 7.52 remaining in the first quarter. I think 
Play. Right, he got it. Carson uh, Roberts field goal is good. So with uh, 7.49 remaining in the first quarter, it's the Falcons three and the uh, Bearcats. Golly, you got to wake up there, Jerry. And the Bearcats at uh, seven. They still have the lead. Now the uh, Falcons uh, get ready to. We'll be back for the timeout on the field in just a moment. Falcons ready to kick off at their 35-yard line. 7.49 remaining in the first quarter. The Bearcats 7 and the Falcons 3 at this point in the game. This is a 10-play, 55-yard field goal uh, drive for the Falcons, taking three minutes and nine seconds off the clock. Carson Roberts kicking the field goal through to put the Falcons on the board. And now they've got to kick off, and let's see what kind of adjustments the Falcon defense has come up with. Jordan Kent, the ball carrier, he breaks out and goes all the way down to the 40-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. 36, 37. 61 yards on the kickoff return by the Southwest Baptist Bearcats or being pushed out of bounds at the 30, I'm sorry, 41 yard line of, also had a penalty marker on the play. Looks like they're going to take about 10 yards off the field position of the Southwest Missouri Baptist uh, Bobcats. Jordan turned the uh, afterburners on about his own 40 yard line. And he was really trying to head for that uh, end zone as fast as he could. That makes the net return 49 yards for Southwest. I'll give you some information on them here in a little bit. Did a little research this week since we've never seen Southwest Baptist University. Some interesting facts that I came up with about the university. Cooper Callis dropped the back. Now he's decided to run with the ball. He's at the 40 yard line to the 35. And he's going to be marked at the 36 yard Cooper line. Callis, the ball and it's a first down for Touchdown the Bearcats. Yeah, he defense. decided to take off. Saw the uh, opening there in the middle of the Falcon defense. And nobody there for UTPB to make the tackle until he got down, actually slid down. At the Falcon 36 yard line. Abel Carter takes the uh, handoff. He's still running. 
inside the 20 yard line. Finally, uh, three or four of the uh, Falcons the managed game. to pull him down, but not before he got Back that first down. 42 Hayden, Kelly. 42 Hayden Kelly, the linebacker making the play. You see our Trans Global Productions instant replay. They're winning the line of scrimmage right now, Jerry. Yeah, they're looking pretty good to me. Yep. They've got to shore up the middle of that line and get that line of scrimmage moving back the other way. Pass uh, going in the end zone, in and out of the hands of uh, number six, 40, no, 44, number yeah. 44. Yeah. Ten on the coverage, Justin Campbell, that was 44, Mason Bolin open on the uh, corner route over here to the near sideline. I guarantee you their quarterback's going to see that in film session and say, if I just put a little more air under that, it's a touchdown. That's right. Marcus Manuel, the ball carrier, he goes around to the... Let me see there where the Take ball the is going to be uh, around the 14, uh, the nine-yard line. He just got inside a couple of yards there. Third down and two. Good thing holding to a field goal here at least. Third and two. Need some penetration from that line. Dallas is looking to pass. He throws, and it's good inside the five at the uh, four-yard line. Pass complete to number three, Curtis Blewett. Brought down by Falcons on the defense there, get, getting down first at the, looks like it's going to be at the five-yard line. line. Bearcats have first and goal. Preston Carson uh, was the recipient of that ball pass. They're inside the five. Falcons in a lot of trouble right now, I believe. They just can't figure out what they're going to do. Mm. And once again, Abel Carter. Carter's the ball carrier. At the, it just a, a hair inside the, the uh, one yard line. Ball be placed at the one. Second 97 for the Falcons ends up bringing the ball. The ball carrier, you see right there from the south end zone, they're getting a good push right now, Jerry. Joseph Williams, the defensive lineman from Long Beach, making the tackle for the for the uh, Falcons. Pass is good in the end zone for the touchdown, Jordan Kemp. This is one of the things you see, Jerry, when you don't play somebody you've never seen before. Yeah, I don't know how much scouting you get, how much video you can get, but right now, Southwest Baptist has taken two drives down the field for touchdowns, and right now they've got the Falcon defense on their heels a little bit. Extra point try is good. And the extra point is good with 533 remaining in the first quarter. It's the Bearcats 14 and the Falcons 3. Well, the uh, Falcons have to put something together right here and kind of figure out how they're going to uh, survive tonight, I believe. Yeah, they look, they're looking a little a little pale. They look like they're a little bit uh, uh, confused and 
Not sure really what they want to do. Seven play, 51 yard touchdown scoring drive for the Southwest Baptist Bobcats. Taking two minutes and seven seconds off the clock. And you're right, the offense now has to take this drive and go down and maybe score, get at least a field goal. I'd like to see them get a touchdown here so they could reestablish some momentum for the Falcons there. The Bearcats, I think I said Bobcats there, sorry. Bearcats are going to kick off. Logan Turner, the kicker. He caught, kicked it very high in the air. Turner is going to be up to the 30 yard line. That's uh, number five for UTPB on the uh, kickoff return. I think that's MJ Link, a senior from Lakeland, Florida. We say we'll see MJ on offense as well. So, Falcons have the ball first and 10 from their own 30-yard line. We appreciate you joining us tonight. You're hearing us on uh, the internet. Appreciate you joining us. Those of you from Southwest that might be listening or tuning in, we've got a timeout on the field with 5.09 left in the first quarter. The Bearcats of Southwest Baptist up 14 to 3. Back to uh, the ball game this afternoon. The 509 remaining in the first quarter. 14 to three. The Bearcats lead the Falcons. They're underway again. Tackle made by Baylor. Abel Carter. No correction. No gain on the play. Second down and ten. Talking about the running yeah. back. Yeah, that I'm, was I'm sorry there. I got got confused. You know how I am. 33 there on the run for the Falcons on first down. Now they're going to take a shot down. They're getting held down here. Pass My is goodness. Incomplete. Pass is incomplete. The intended the receiver was receiver. number five for the Falcons. Jim J. Link. That's Jim J. Link. There was a little story about him uh, here lately. enjoyed it talking about how uh, how good of a fella he really was set some big ball games for UTPB in the past very quick has good hands third and ten back to pass incomplete the intended receiver was number eight, pass is incomplete. eight for the uh, Falcons That ball got tipped at the line of scrimmage and did not have a chance to get to the intended receiver. And Falcons are going to have to punt the football from their own 30 yard line. Well, back to receive is Brendan uh, Smith, number seven. Kick is uh, very good. Goes yep. down back to the 20-yard uh, line. Smith is uh, making a good run back. He'll they'll come up with good uh, field position to begin this next strike. Jerry Southwest Baptist University is a private Baptist University in Bolivar, Missouri. 49 yards on the punt there, according to Clay. It's affiliated with the Missouri Baptist Convention, which is part of the Southern Baptist Convention. And in 2019, it had a total enrollment of 3,280 students. Uh, they have four uh, campuses 
for Southwest Baptist University located in Boulevard, Mountain View, Salem, and Springfield, Missouri. I'll give you a little more info here. Handoff goes to Abel Carter from the Bearcats quarterback. He pulled in uh, a quick first down at the 37 yard or 47 yard line of the uh, Falcons. And, uh, they just they just keep moving against these guys. They're winning, I'm winning the line of scrimmage right now. Oh. Sure. Defense is going to have to make some stunts or do a little different uh, technique to try to get there. There's a wide receiver screen on first down. UTPB read that pretty well. Marcus Emanuel was the uh, receiver in, on that play. And there was no gain at all. DJ Gisa, number nine, making the uh, tackle. Boulevard is the county seat of Polk County, Missouri. 2019 in the U.S. Census, the population in Boulevard was 11,067. My goodness. The city has a total area of about 8.3 square miles. We'll do, give you a little more here in a minute. Callis hands off to uh, Abel Carter, and he blasts a, a good running back in there. I'm telling you, he, he took that ball game. up there like he knew exactly where he was going, and he wound up at the 29. Yep, that's just blowing a hole off the left side there. I think they ought to move some of them, <laughs> those linebackers up to the line of scrimmage a little tighter, maybe. Well, the thing is, if they get bad, if they get blocked, Jerry, you don't have anybody on the second level. That was uh, uh, Clay showing me here, number 30. He's got eight carries for 64 yards, and we're just in the first quarter. Cooper Callis, the quarterback, hands the ball off once again to Abel Carter. And Carter keeps that ball moving to the 25-yard line. 2.26 to go in the uh, first quarter. They got some big yeah, offensive on. linemen. You would expect that in college football, Jerry. Yeah, no, right now, not. they are moving the front three. It's a 3-3. Three, three, five defensive look from UTPB and right now they're moving the front three UTPB showing showing they were going to bring a linebacker blitz there play got changed looks like their defensive assignments may get changed Callis looking to pass and he's got a man in the flats over on the left side it's incomplete incomplete pass 23, Cameron Amayo, a defensive back, redshirt freshman from Cypress, Texas, on the coverage for UTBB. Third down. Let's see here on third down if the Falcon defense, I'm a, Southwest might be in two down territory here. Wind coming from the south from your right to left on your screen. They get half of this. I wouldn't be surprised if they go for it. Well, they brought in uh, mm. number 20, Ferguson uh, Cameron. Pass is incomplete. And his intended receiver. Watch, watch right game. here, Jerry. The ball's going to get tipped by number 34 right here for the Falcons. That is Jalen Rockmore. They called his name already here in the ball game. Jalen's a sophomore, 6'1", 240, from McKinney High School in McKinney, Texas, right outside of Dallas. So we're decided that we're going to uh, put this in the air and try to collect three points, and it's up, and it is good. That's the way you do it. 135 left to play in the first quarter, and it's uh, Bearcats 17 and the Falcons three.
Welcome back. Uh, the uh, Bearcats are preparing to kick off once again to the Falcons. Back deep to receive will be number five, MJ Link, and number seven. We're going to get some field position out of this, Jerry. what Southwest flies around on that field with their kickoff coverage team they Better get down the there in a hurry you're gonna see on our trans global productions instant Tackle replay the here that uh, uh, they just closed up the hole that the run runner wanted to go through look at there right there on the uh, on our replay and man there's about three or four Bearcats down there to make the play first and ten for the, first Falcons, 10 for the Falcons from their own 29 yard line Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Killian Carper, number 46, their defensive end from Plano East, Plano, Texas, making the play for the Bearcats. 26 on the carry for the Falcons, and they got nothing there off the right side on second down. A Sloan Roller. 215 pound linebacker from Verdigris High School in Verdigris, Oklahoma. Number 26, Corey Harris now running, playing running back for the Falcons. It's 39. They need to pick this up. Keeper right up the middle, and yep. he makes it close to that first down. We'll see what that, uh, yes, it will be the first at oh, the. Oh, it'll be a yard game. short. Yeah, I, he, he marked it back at the 45-7, uh, and I thought I had it. Uh, uh, or I just thought I had that one pegged. That's all there is to it. Huh? That's 38-yard <laughs> line. 30, yeah, 38. They need to get to 39. And we have come to the end. Of the first quarter of play with our score, the Southwest Baptist Bearcat 17, UT Permian Basin Falcons 3. We'll be back in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, to, uh, give your attention to the north 20 of the stadium. Today's first go hometown hero is Roy Dobbins from Midland. Roy enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1993. After serving our country for 15 years, we return, we will return to his hometown to serve his fellow veterans by leading the Permian Warriors Partnership, a veteran nonprofit intent on improving the quality of life after their military service. He is currently a UT TV student pursuing his master's degree in clinical counseling. Let's all give Roy a Falcon welcome and thank him for his service. Joining Roy on the field are University President Dr. Sandra Woodland and Director of Athletics Todd Beeler. Ladies and gentlemen, Roy Dobbins today's first go hometown hero. Falcons up. Welcome back to the stadium as uh, the Bearcats uh, just wound up 17-3 uh, over the Falcons. And the Val uh, Falcons are doing a, a punt right now. The 
Andre Robinson, the ball carrier, and he runs it down uh, to about the fifth on the return. 42 yards yeah. on the punt. He turns it down to the 31 yard line. That's where they'll spot the ball to begin there. The ball be placed at the 31 yard line. First and 10 for Bearcats. First quarter stats, we just got it handed to us. Three, four, four first downs for UTPB. Southwest Baptist with 12 total yards, 137 for the Bearcats to 65 for UTPB. And uh, I'll give you a couple more stats here as they get ready to run first down here. UTPB's got to change that with a defensive stand here. There you go. It's a good tackle right there by the Falcon linebacker, number 35, Eric Franco. Cameron Ferguson, the ball carrier. 68 yards carry, uh, rushing back back for 35, Eric Abel Franco. Carter. Loss of two, first uh, in the first quarter. Got a quarterback, 6 of 11. Cooper Callis for 37 yards. For UT Permian Basin, Tilford leading the way on the ground with 11 yards on five carries. Dylan Graham, three of six for 45 yards passing in the first quarter. Callis looking for a way to get rid of the football. He does, but uh, to no avail. Yeah, then the receiver was Marcus Emanuel, and he threw it down at his uh, feet. So that'll bring up a third down for the Bearcats. That receiver tried to come back and help his quarterback out once he saw him running out of the pocket, but just did not connect. Here's third and 12. Falcon defense needs to get off the field here. One high safety in the back end for the Falcons. Callis uh, tries the pass again. It's complete at the 30-yard line to number 23, Jordan Kent. It'll be short. For the uh, Bearcats, but yes, it will be short, and they're going to have to punt. Uh, they may, they may not decide to punt, though, the way they've been moving the football. Yeah, I think it'd be a good idea here to flip the field and get some field position. You don't make it give UTPB a short field and some momentum to maybe let them get back into the game. I like this call on punt here for the Bearcats. Get her Abzik back deep to receive, number 13. It'll be a false start against the Bearcats. Hey, Jerry, let us mention right quick, Clay and I today had lunch over here with our families and friends today. Actually, Barry Sykes' sister and brother-in-law, who's done these games for quite a while. We met a couple of, parent, a couple of parents from the uh, Southwest Baptist team that came in today, number 92, Nate Stelkin, and his brother, 97, Ben Stelkin. They flew in today to watch their son play for the Bearcats. Logan Claiborne gets the punt away. Mom asked us to uh, mention that uh, actually the Stelkins' grandparents were going to be watching on the live stream tonight, this afternoon or this evening. And we would told them we'd mention them and uh, let them know that they were here and supporting the Stelkin kids as they are playing football for the Bearcats, and of course, getting their education from Southwest Baptist. The ball be placed at the 38 yard line. So the Falcons the set up their camp at the uh, 39, uh, 38 yard line, first and 10. Mm, pass is just a little bit out of reach. Pass is incomplete. For Curtis Cullard, uh, the intended receiver, just couldn't get to it. Second down now, 12.54 remaining before the half. Falcons need to get some offense going, Jerry. Dropped one back. He's looking. He couldn't find one. Let's see what has to do. He 
just throws it away. Had nobody Ten open on that play. Third down and 10. Third and 10 now. So they got to make this one. Let's see what they can come up with. Ball's in the air. The pass is complete for that first down. Pass complete to Abstead. What a nice uh, pass. Nice pass and catch. Pressure coming on the outside. And boy, the, the uh, quarterback down. there, number three, uh, that is Dylan Graham, just really put that right on the money. Here they are going deep. Oh. He had the man clear, but he just overthrown the that little a uh, little guy a, a little bit. Number 85, Shamar Davis. Mm. But he got he got by the two uh, defenders. defenders. Yeah, yeah. So he'd like to put a little air under that and let him run under it. But it didn't happen. And here's second and ten for the Falcons from the Bearcat 47-yard line. Well, as you saw, the pass was intercepted there by number 21. My goodness. Yeah, he'd like to have this one back. Uh, he thought he could put, fit that ball over the uh, defender for Southwest, number 21 there. That was uh, Kevin Gilliam, a six foot, 198 pound corner. He's a junior from Stephen F. Austin in Houston, Texas, making the interception. The turnover will give the Bearcats first and 10 from their own 33 yard line. Cooper Callis uh, brings them out now at the 33 yard line. Got a lot of time. Now he's getting rushed a little bit. Gets that ball in the air. And he comes up with a complete to uh, Preston Carson for a first down at the 47 yard line. Justin Campbell on the coverage for the Falcons, but not before they get the ball caught. And do move those sticks for a first down at the Bearcat 47 yard line. Look at the pass again. He's got a man, and he caught the ball at the uh, 35 yard line of the Falcons. Back shoulder throw there, Jerry. Curtis uh, Cuillard, the uh, receptioner there. Watch our replay. He just back shoulder, just put that ball on the back shoulder and let the receiver come get it. And he did just that for another Bearcat first down. They're getting a play from the sideline over there. Now he'll have the ball off to uh, Abel Carter. Carter's the ball carrier. 34 for the Falcons on the tackle. Jalen Rockmore, we've Jaylen called his four. name already few times tonight from his linebacker position. They get on him for about two yards there. It's a good job by Jalen to come up and make that tackle and force it to be second and eight from the 33-yard line. Well, Callis and uh, Carter have been a pretty good uh, duo back there today. So we'll see what they do now. He's looking for that pass. Got a man way open and going into the end zone. Oh, he didn't. He got tripped up at the five. But let's see Back here. Number 43, Brian Burns. He was 40, wide. Yeah, 40 wide to open. For the Bearcats. Ball at the Falcons four yard line. Wide open coming out there on the right flat. I mean, from the word go, he was gone. Yep. First and goal for the Bearcats from the Falcon five yard line. Uh, 
That scrum's going to get in the end zone. And he's going in. It's uh, six points. Watch our Trans Global Productions instant replay. Cleared out the right side. And then from there, he's just lower than the defensive players and got a little help from his uh, offensive lineman to get pushed into the end zone for a Southwest Baptist touchdown. Logan Turner to put that. Uh, Extra point try is good. He did put it through the uh, <laughs> upright. And uh, right now with 10, 22, to, uh, 21 to play uh, before the half, it's the uh, Bearcats, 24, and the Falcons, 3. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Welcome back uh, where the Bearcats lead the Falcons 24 to 3. Back deep number five, MJ Link. And number 13, Southwest just kind of dominating the play right now. Jerry, offense has got to, or UTPB's got to, they got to, they got to, they got to get something going. They got to ignite themselves and get some points on the board here. Well, the ball's in the air, and we'll see who comes up with it. He dances around and starts uh, back up the field, and he's still on his feet. Stopped at the 19-yard line. And that was number the ball 13, 13 on the return. Yep. Falcon Second offense will start from Jordan their own Andrew. 20, looks like maybe 19-yard line. First and 10 for the Falcons. That was a five play, 67 yard drive. And the Bearcats took two minutes off the game clock to get that touchdown on the board. He just decided to do a keeper. He slid down around the 24 yard line. Going to the ball here. That's our quarterback there Jerry's talking about. It's number three, Dylan Graham on the run up the middle. Saw the C's part in the middle and get about four or five yards on first down. Four yards, actually. And off goes to number 33, Nathan Tilford. Tilford the ball here. Tackle made by Kellen Yep, I tried to run that off the left side, and they got good support off their right defensive end position. 
Come up and make the play there for no gain. Third and six from the 23 of UT Permian Basin. I don't think he made that catch, did he? Well, I don't no, believe. no, you're right, Clay. They did not execute there and get that ball caught. And they're going to have to punt the football back to Southwest Baptist. Carson Roberts back there to punt. Back deep is uh, Brendan Smith, number seven, for the Bearcats. His kicker was is away and uh, wow, what a kick! Wow, all the way back to his own 20 yard line. He's at at the 30, 35. Tips out of bounds at the 37 yard, 38 yard line. Be first and 10. 55 yards on the punt, according to Clay from Carson Roberts. Good job of getting that ball off and getting it to turn over. Jacob Oliveris, Sergio Landeros actually on the punt there for the uh, for the Falcons, senior from Seminole right up the highway here. Punting for the Falcons and Southwest Baptist will start first and ten from their own 38-yard line. Thirty is in motion. Callis as a keeper. Heads to the left and goes out of bounds at the 45-yard line, maybe 49. That's where he spots it at the 49-yard line. Or at the 44-yard line. Eric Franco, the number 35 for the uh, Falcons on the tackle. Oh, that's good defense there. Yeah, he did a great job. That was number 16, I believe. Tried a little 19, 19. misdirection in the backfield and then tried to swing it out to the right flat in front of their bench. The corner over there, number 19 for UT Permian Basin. Read that well. Chandler Johnson from Allen, Texas made the play. Third and about five. Let's see if the Falcon defense can hold them here and get off the field. Callis looking to throw the ball. Uh, he has no room to do anything but wait and fall down in front of himself. Uh, he had nowhere to go. It's good pressure off the left defensive side of the Falcon defense to get there and force the pocket to collapse and get the quarterback down so that uh, this will force the Southwest Baptist Bearcats to have to punt from their own 39 yard line. Logan Claiborne will do the punting for the Bearcats. Like number 13 deep for us is going to be uh, Gunnar Epsick. Called his name a few times tonight. Ball game. And he's caught it at a fair catch at the 25-yard line. It'll be first and 10 from that point for the uh, Falcons. Boy, if the UTPB offense could get a score here, Jerry, and make it 24 to 10, momentum would switch a little bit, and maybe they could do that little double dip I talk about all the time. If you've heard me do these broadcasts, a lot of times teams will score right before the half and they'll have the option of taking the ball on a kickoff. Looks like we had a penalty. Substitution infraction on UT Permian Basin. They're gonna make them bring it all the way back to the 39 and then they will mark off that penalty five yards to the Bearcat 44 and make them punt it again. Fourth and four. They could score here. Maybe hold them. 
get that first possession of the second half, third quarter, and score again, that'd be a 14-point turnaround and put them right back into the ball game. Wow, look at that punt. Logan, uh, Logan uh, Claiborne with the punt, and it's a nice kick. Let's see where they're going to pop the ball coming down to the 20 yard line exactly. Gunner uh, Epsick uh, had no, no chance to field that ball. You know, this school, Southwest Baptist, was founded in, uh, it was actually Southwest Baptist College in, in 1878 in Lebanon, Missouri. The campus only had an enrollment that first year of 60 students and only six faculty members. College lasted there for a year before the city decided they didn't want that to, uh, to be on there. We're going to have a timeout on the field. We'll be back here in just a moment. Bearcats up 24 to 3. Galop Ultra, 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Six fifty nine remaining to play before the half. The Bearcats leading the Falcons twenty four to three. Falcons with the ball, and here we go. He's looking to pass and didn't have it in him. He got crashed back behind the uh, line of scrimmage. Big loss on the play. That was number twenty one. I think he plays corner for them. Yes, he does. Kevin Gilliam coming on Lawson corner blitz the off Kevin the back Gilliam. side of the UTPB offense, the blind side, and he got there and made the play. Hmm. A little running game Double going there off the left side on second down. And that's with the uh, number 33, the Definitely running back. That's Nathan Tilford. Yes. Third and 13. Drops back to pass, got a man open and uh, kind of juggled down there. Let me see, uh, defending on that play was uh, number 24 for the uh, Bearcats. Looked a little uh, dicey to me, but who am I? Nobody. Well, that's not true. <laughs> fourth and 13. Or a third and 13. No, it's fourth and 14, isn't it? Fourth and 13. Let me get this off and try to flip the field here a little bit. Is this Landeros? This is Landeros back to punt. Boy, and that's going to be running or roughing the kicker. The punter, I should say. I think this is all going to be for naught. I think this is going to be a personal foul, roughing the punter, and a first down for UT Permian Basin. I think you're absolutely right. That yellow feller was uh, dropped at the five-yard line, and uh, I think everybody in the uh, stadium knew what was going to happen next. They're going to decline so it's not roughing, it's ru it's running into the kicker. Now 
hasn't worked in at all. Only a five-yard penalty. Yeah. So they set up the ball at the 22-yard line. And we'll do it all over. That's the penalty fourth down and eight. Sergio Landere, uh, Landereus, Landeros, Landeros, 49, the uh, punter. One I said earlier was from Seminole right up the road. Played Seminole High School. Pretty good punt and down to the 35. First and 10 the for the Bearcats. The first and 10 for the Bearcats. That was 43 yards on the punt by Sergio Landeros. And the Bearcats will start first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. 540 to go to the halftime. It's a happy thing we have up here in the halftime. Uh, one of the guys up here really entertains us. With, we'll tell you about it one of these days, but right now I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Want to know who's doing the entertaining? Uh, yeah. It's not me. It cannot <laughs> be me. Good play on first down by the Falcon defense. JJ Williams, the ball carrier. Number 14 the for the Darian Falcons, Ford. Darian Forge. 22 on the carry for the Bear Cats, that's J.J. Williams from Mariana, Florida. Playing running back for those Bear Cats. Second and eight from the Bear Cat 37 yard line. Cooper Calisco drops back to uh, pass. Got a man in the open at the 48-yard uh, line. Pass complete to number three. And Curtis it's Ford. another first down first for the Bearcats. Set in front of number 21 for the Falcons, Antoine Tanner, a defensive back, sophomore from Antioch, California, on the coverage over there. A little stop route. 18 yards up the field. Had a big cushion off the corner there, and they executed for a first down. Handoff goes to Caleb Pearson, number 22. Not much going there. Caleb Lost a little bit. Carrier. Back at the 50-yard line. Frank Mulipola, the defensive lineman, 6'4", 265, from Pago Pago, American Samoa. Coming from the defensive end position for a two-yard loss. Good play by that young man right there. That don't mean Clock running at 349. Ball comes back to Callis. He's looking to pass one more time. He's going to be uh, snowed under back at the 40-yard line. I think that's our veteran there, Darian Forge, number 14, coming in on the sack. Watch our Transglobal Productions instant replay. Darian coming right off the right edge. He also got a little bit of help from number 94 from the other defensive end position. That's Dominic Varela. 6'2", 275-pound defensive lineman from El Paso Coronado, the Thunderbirds. Pass nice is play. complete to uh, Abel Carter. He's going to be uh, Pass complete to Carter. short of that uh, first Pass down, however. Gain of 12 on the play. Fourth Make down fourth and nine. And nine. They're going to go for it, I think. I think that the, they're going to kick. Yep. That they are. I think they, uh, right now, I think they're pretty comfortable with where they're riding, and they 
they uh, they know they're going to be resting a little bit, and come back and open up one more time. The punt is uh, gorgeous. <laughs> a fair yep. catch called at the nine. You know, a lot of times, Jerry, you watch these games and you'll hear the these other guys that do the commentary talk about, well, he's in, he was at the 10-yard line, it's over his head, let it go. I like him making that fair catch there because of the way the coverage was. They might have downed that thing inside the five-yard line. Here they've got a little more to work with. First and 10 for the Falcons from their own 10, but they didn't lose that five yards of field position there. That's right. So they're coming out and uh, going to see what they can pick up and go. You'll hear them say, well, they'll plant him on the 10. If it's over his head, he'll let it go and see if it'll bounce into the end zone. But I like him fielding that there and keeping a little field position for the offense. The handoff goes to number five. MJ Link, the ball carrier. Tackle made by number nine, Antoine Bailey. Number five on the uh, carry, MJ Link. Senior from Lakeland, Florida. From Garden City Community College on the run. We have a casualty on the floor out there. Have a couple of them, actually. Uh, one of the uh, Bearcats and one of the Falcons. Let's take an injury timeout on the field. 143 left in the first half. Bearcats up 24 to 3. Third and about eight for the Falcons. See what they dial up here. Little screen action. Pass is complete. MJ Link. Pass complete number 26. Little short. Corey Harris. Well, I'll tell you what, Southwest Baptist really read that screen very well from their linebacking core. They came up and made the tackle there uh, to stop the Falcons on that screen pass. You see it here on our replay. Uh, good pursuit from inside out by couple of Bearcats there, got him out of bounds, going to make it fourth and two from the 19 for the Falcons. They're going to punt the football. Sergio Landeros, number 49, doing the punting. Back deep, uh, number seven. What's going on here? Brendan Smith. Penalty back there. Oh, I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised they didn't throw the flag there running into the kicker. They did not. Ball's going to come dead at the 34 of the Southwest the Baptist, and they'll have the football there the first, first the and 10 from that spot. They've got three timeouts in their back pocket. Let's see if they use them to try to get on down and make the make another score before half with one minute left. There was a lot of history I looked up here, Jerry, on Southwest Baptist. This campus that they're at actually was destroyed by a fire in early June of 1910. Fire broke up out of, broke out after some very suspicious activity. And, uh, they lost that campus. They had to rebuild it after the fire. Uh, some were meant to believe arson was the call there. Abel uh, Carter, the ball carrier for the Bearcats, as he, he comes out over the 35-yard uh, line to the 36. He's back to pass now, and the pass is completed down at the uh, 45. That's impressive, that throw right there and catch. Good concentration by the receiver 
And we've got a timeout on the field being called by Southwest Baptist. Welcome back. Uh, 33 seconds uh, left to play before the halftime here at the stadium. And we're glad you're with us. Callis and Carter. The dangerous duo. And the pass is complete to uh, Abel Carter. Pass complete, Abel Carter. Call it incomplete. The the Called it Taylor. incomplete. Antoine Turner with a big hit for the Falcons coming up from his corner position, right corner. Uh, pull up back play there. And we've got another timeout by Southwest. You reckon they're just tired or they don't want to go ahead and go to the locker room and rest a well, while? I think they're trying to <laughs> use they're trying to use this clock and these timeouts to get down and get get some more points, but um, they're just, they're, they're, the defense has made two good plays there. Only 25 seconds remain on the tick. Bearcats at 24 and Falcons three is a go back to play. Allison Carter. In the backfield and he's looking uh, for a receiver. Decided to run over on the right side and steps out of bounds at the 48 yard line. I think we're going to have a holding call. Yes, we are over here back behind the play. And they negate that, that gain over by the Southwest Baptist Bearcats. And they are going to bring it back to the 36-yard line of Southwest. On the holding call. So that's going to make it second. And a bunch. <laughs> second and 20. Second and 20. Well, well, there's some visiting going on yeah, down there, there sure right now. Is. I don't know. I think we've got an injured player over there on the far side. It's a UTPB player actually on their sideline. We've got an injury timeout on the field. Let's go ahead and take it with them.
now we go back to play uh, as uh, Callis and Carter get ready to go back in the backfield. We've got uh, 17 seconds remaining to play before the half. And the actors are back there, and let's see what happens. Hands off to Abel Carter, number 30. Cameron Ferguson, the ball carrier. Number 20, I believe that's on the carry there. Yep, 20 was, it was Cameron Ferguson, 6'1", 215 pound running back from Decatur. And that is the end of the That's gonna bring us to the end of the first half of play. Well, yeah. Go ahead. And the uh, score is the Bearcats 24 and the Falcons three. Ladies and gentlemen, to put your attention at the 10 yard line of the north end zone, we've got a really cool thing going on right here. Time for our Raising Cane's Kick for Chicken Challenge. Tonight we have Isaac Riley. Raise your hand, Isaac. Landon Diego. And Cassie Ramirez. They'll be attempting a kick at the 20-yard, uh, doing a 20-yard field goal. The fans that kick the longest field goal will be announced as our Raising Cane's winner and receive a gift basket provided by Raising Cane's. All right, let's go. Just a little bit underneath the bar. Landon's turn. I think the shoe went farther than the football. All right, Cassie, it's your turn to redeem. It's halftime, Falcons fans, you know what that means. It's time for your very own Spirit of the Permian Basin. The director of the UTPB band, Dr. Brian Brown. Associate Director of Bands, Dr. Lindsay Iden, Percussion Instructor, Dr. Sam Pierce, and Teacher and Solo Coach, Dr. Emily Andrito. Now for your listening pleasure, the spirit of the Permian Basin.
Welcome back. Uh, 15 minutes to go in the third quarter. Uh, the Bearcats are leading 24 to 3 over the Falcons. And we're getting ready to uh, see the Falcons, uh, the uh, Bearcats to kick off to the Falcons. Maybe they can get some uh, things going here in the second uh, half and do some good for a bit for a change. So let's, let, let's just let them kick it off and we'll see what's going on. Good kick. That's way out of the end zone. Well, Jerry, I'll tell you, statistically, it's as lopsided as the scoreboard is right now. In the first half alone, Southwest Baptist with 17 first downs, UT Permian Basin with five. Rushing yardage, 106 yards for Southwest Baptist to 23 for UT Permian Basin. Passing yards 138 to 63 in favor of Southwest and 244 total yards for Southwest to 86 for the Falcons. I'll give you some individual stats here in a second. My goodness, and let's see. Dylan Graham uh, hands the ball off to Tilford. MJ Lee, the ball carrier. Number five, MJ Link on the carry there for the Falcons. Got about a yard, maybe two. And bring up second and nine for the Falcon offense. Link carries the ball once again. Got absolutely nothing but about a yard. Uh, he had a carry for two yards in the first half, leading rusher for. Permian Basin, Nathan Tilford, seven carries, 15 yards. Their leading ball carrier, Ali Bell Carter, 12 carries for 76 yards and two touchdowns. Graham back to pass. And the pass is caught down at the 30-yard uh, line. And that was uh, MJ Link on that reception. Three and out. Falcons are going to have to punt passing wise. Dylan Graham in the first Central half, 5 of 15 with an interception for 63 yards. Their quarterback, Cooper Callis, 14 of 21, 138 yards and a touchdown. Their leading receiver, Curtis Colliard, five total, I'm sorry, three total for 34. The punt goes off there. Going to be down at the 36-yard line. Leading receiver for the UT Permian Basin Falcons is Gunnar Absick. Two catches for 24 yards. And uh, it's been a busy first half for the punter for UT Permian Basin. Five punts, two, uh, 237 yards, 47.4-yard average for Sergio Landeros. Andre Robinson, the leading tackler in the first half for the Falcons, and this defense has got to make some things happen now, Jerry, to start the third quarter. Well, back in the uh, offense, uh, Callis and uh, Carter. They moved the ball out to the 45-yard line. So that's a pickup of nine quick. We Ella Pearson on the tackle for the Falcons, but that run got outside, no contain out there. Got the edge set, and made about nine yards on first down for the Bearcats. Abel Carter, Carter the uh, ball carrier, and he blasts on through inside to the 49 yard line of the Falcons. Uh, first down. Dante Stewart, number one, 5'10", 160-pound junior from Waco, La Vega on the tackle. We called his name a lot last year. He's a returning player starter for the Falcons. I believe it's Donta Stewart, D-O-N-T-A. Cooper Callis, long back with Carter. Carter's got the ball and he got some running room and he's got up it away inside to the 20 yard line. Watch our Trans Global Productions instant replay. The, the ball 
flow going one way to get the Falcons out of position and hand it off back to the other side, far side of the field. Good run, good execution by Southwest Baptist. And they've got a first down at the Falcon 33-yard line. Well, you know, Abel Carter don't look like he can move like that until you see him moving. He's uh, kind of a squatty body, but boy, he knows how to use it. Got 15 carries for 108 yards, according to Clay. Ferguson, the ball carrier. Caleb. Uh, Tackle made by Caleb Pearson. Gain of three, second down seven. Second down and about seven for the Bearcats. Quarterback looking to pass and he got a wide open man and he goes in for the score. It was just that simple. They just did their job Pass and they got six right now. Watch, the that's the H back just uh, right out on the flat to clear out and allowed number 43 to work his way up the field for a bear cat touchdown. I'll give you his name here in just a moment. Except this roster doesn't have any yet. Is Bryant Burns? He was actually he's actually listed as a tight end. Logan uh, Turner's that point after point attempt is good. is good with 10:52 remaining to play in the third quarter. It's the Bearcats 31 and the Falcons three. Our family's been farming in Texas for over 100 years and supplying produce to HEB for almost as long. Back then, my grandfather did business with HEB, often sealing the deal with a simple handshake. Today, they're still our best partner. HEB is family for us. So year-round, we supply HEB with locally grown produce, picked fresh and often delivered the same day. It's been a great relationship. Here's to 100 more years. This is the locally grown department at HEB. No store does more than my HEB. Let's get a count and see who won. Team one, one. Congratulations to our winning team. Falcons up. We're back and it's 10.52 remaining to play in the third quarter. 31 to three, the Bearcats over the Falcons. Ball is caught inside at the five, he's to the 15. He could break away, it gets a good run out to the 31 yard line. They'll spot it at the That's 33. The Tripped up on the play by Jed Brandon. Still going to see Dylan Graham at the quarterback position here. The ball be placed at the 32 He's a yard line. Six foot two, 190 pound down. sophomore from Walnut Creek, California. Back there in the backfield with him looks like it's going to be number five. That's MJ Link. No, nope. they're going to 
going to change that up. Make uh, Harris, number 26, Corey Harris, their running back. Pass incomplete, second down. back and gets the ball away. A little swing pass out yep. to the back over on the left side there. Watch our Trans Global Productions instant replay. And he just kind of swings himself out there in the left flat. Defenders come down on him early for no gain. Third and 10 for the Falcon offense. They almost got a big turnover there, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Knocking that ball loose, coming from the backside on the rush there. Harris just lost, uh, just lost the uh, grip on the football, and and you're right, boy, that was uh, almost uh, a big wreck. And yeah, Graham, Graham got hit from behind pretty hard there, and uh, what caused that fumble? But Falcons got on it, and they're going to have to punt from their own 26 yard line, fourth and about 15 or 16 looks like. Brendan Smith back deep. Ball's in the air, hits the ground around the 40 and it's rolling toward the uh, southern hemisphere. And will be down to the 34 yard line, 40 yards on the punt. His, he's got one, two, three, seven punts. Over 40 yards tonight, I'm talking about Landeros. Sergio Landeros. So, Bearcats have the ball first and 10, as I said on their 34. Let's see what they do here. Coming out with 921 left in the third quarter. Cooper Callis and uh, Abel Carter in the backfield. And off goes to Carter. That little guy can run, and he brought it out for a first down as he got past the 45-yard uh, line. Watch this, folks. When he sees a hole, he just turns it on and goes. He gets upfield. He doesn't waste any time finding a way to get north or south, whichever the way he's going. It's north there. Their receivers are excellent blockers. And they are creating uh, a mismatch right now at the line of scrimmage against the Falcons. Pass is complete to number four. Penalty marker on the play. We have a man on the ground at the 42. Penalty flag on the field. Let's see what to call here. We got a injury timeout. Got an injury timeout on the field and also a penalty marker. An eligible man downfield is going to be the call. So we've got a man down. Let's take an injury timeout. We'll be right back here in just a moment.
welcome back. 8.42 remaining to play in the uh, third quarter. The Bearcats have the ball at the 43-yard line. Handoff once again to Abel Carter, and uh, he takes care of business down to the 50-yard line. Abel Carter, the ball carrier. Number one, Dante Stewart on the tackle for the Falcons coming up from his safety position. He's a junior from Waco, La Vega. So pretty good yard, pretty good yardage there. Second and about eight from the 50 yard line, right at the midfield stripe. At right where he went. How'd you know you was gonna do that? I wanna know how did you know he was gonna do that? Well it's kind of the when you when you when you coach for a living you start looking for things and right there they just had a mount man and uh, sealed off a good block on the right side and that's where the running back went for a Bearcat first down down to the UTPB thirty six. So you just guessed is what I no, got no, 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 he's looking to pass one more time. The man was open, but he uh, threw it a little at the feet and incomplete. incomplete at the 30 yard line. A little surprise with the first down pass there, Jerry, as well as they're throwing the uh, running the football right now. Massive defensive substitution on the line for the Falcons. Three new down linemen and a 3-3 stack look for UTPB on the defensive side of the ball. There's that play we saw earlier. Yeah, a little handoff there to uh, Abel Carter and he is able he gets on down Able there where he here. needs to be at the 31-yard uh, line. That's the back. The back in the Jackson quarterback. Nine, Just kind of take a couple of steps to their left to kind of get those linebackers and They're secondary guys thinking they're going to go left, and then they hand it off almost on a little, little half reverse coming around to the right side, and that gets the defensive personnel out of out of uh, a position to make. The play worked. They got about four yards there on first down. Look at the pass. It is complete at the 20 yard line. I think a little inside, maybe at the 19. Pass complete. Just according three, to what the referee three. comes up with. Making the tackle number 30. Got a receiver Mitchell. down over there on the far first side. Down. I think that's the guy that caught the ball. They call that incomplete? No. We're going to take an injury timeout with them here. 621 left in the third quarter. Welcome back, 6.15 uh, to go in the third quarter. 31 to three, the Bearcats ahead of the Falcons. Cooper Callis, the uh, ball carrier. Now he hands it off to the old Abel Carter, and he does his thing. Carter's a ball carrier. Gets on down to the 15-yard uh, line. Jalen Rockamore, number 34. A linebacker for the Falcons on the tackle. Second down and six. Cooper Callis, the quarterback, 
And he is handing off to <laughs> Abel Carter again. And Carter clips him and puts it right in to, for six points in the end zone. Mm. Man, that, that little guy, he, he does it's his work. Yeah, that's just a little cut back running play there, Jerry. They over pursued. And once they did, the backside was open there and all the running back had to do was run to daylight for a Bearcat touchdown. The extra point coming up. Logan Turner to the kicker and it is good. So with 5.09 remaining to play in the third quarter, it's the Bearcats 38 and the Falcons three. Six carbs and 95 calories. Get great seats. Safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Jerry, just an interesting stat there. Five oh nine remaining to play in the third quarter. Interesting statistic play just handed to me there. Running back number thirty, Abel Carter, twenty one carries, one hundred and forty eight yards and three touchdowns. He also has two catches for twenty yard, twenty four yards. So. They've uh, a really valu valuable little uh, tool, I guarantee you for that. That guy can really do it when he needs to do it. Eight play, 66-yard touchdown scoring drive, taking four minutes and 12 seconds off the clock, resulting in the Southwest Bearcat touchdown, and they're up 38 to 30. MJ Link, number five, back to receive. Also got number 13 back there, Gunnar Absick. We've seen him return a few tonight back there on kickoff coverage or kickoff return, I should say. Here goes Link. Link has got the ball and he's still on his feet and still running to the uh, south. He goes out of bounds inside the 40 at the 39 yard line. Watch our replay here, Jerry. A good hole right there. Ran out of bounds by number eight. Got a block to allow him to get on outside and get about five or ten more yards. This was one of the better First plays. They had, a, they had a penalty on the play, looks like. No. One of the better starting field positions for UTPB tonight at their own 39 yard line. Hill on the quarterback, he drops back looking to pass. Incomplete, the intended receiver was MJ Link. And he just couldn't manage and hang it on. Almost got that in there. Made the right read, just didn't deliver the ball where at length to get it, to get his hands on it. And corral it in, second and 10 from the 39. 
Kayla Graham, the uh, quarterback. Page back, got a uh, man open, and he delivers the ball. He's a little shy of the 45, uh, the 40 yard line. The gunner, we'll see where they mark it. That's an Epsec on a little slot receiver screen and uh, got up the field to the 45 yard line. It'll third be and third and about five, four yards, I should say, for the Falcon offense to get a first down and keep this drive going. Mm, that's a great tackle. That's a fantastic tackle for them by number 33, Levi Correer. Watch this on our replay. That's one-on-one -on -one out in the flat with number nine, uh, Timothy Wiggins. And that young man for Southwest Baptist just made an outstanding play. They're gonna go for it. Fourth and three. Graham back to pass. It's complete close to the 50 yard line. We we think he's gonna be short. They're gonna have to measure this one, I believe. No, no, he's they short. didn't. He 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 showed him back. So so the ball will go over on Downs, and the Bearcats uh, will set up their offensive uh, drive for this moment in time at the 40. Three yard line or 48, 48 yard. yard line. Yep. They're waiting for them to come out, and here they come. 338 left in the third quarter. I'm surprised they're still playing some of their starters, maybe on offense up 38 to 3. Yeah, I believe That's I'd be resting uh, some of them. Callis. Uh, Quarterback is back, uh, and he's looking to pass. He's going to go long. Incomplete. The intended receiver is uh, pass is incomplete. 82. Yeah, number 82 for them is Isaac Scroggins. From West Palm Beach, Florida, sophomore. Their sideline screaming for a holding penalty there. If that ball was overthrown, I don't think it would have. He would have gotten there anyway. They sure wanted a holding call there on the defensive back. Kelly sends the ball off to number twenty. They'll get inside the uh, forty-yard line. See how they just seal it off right there. Jerry on the replay, they just sealed the end down and allowed the running back. I don't have a number 20 on my roster here. I, I don't either, and that's that's why I've been looking for it, and I can't find him. Yeah, he got around the corner, though, and got a good gain, making it third and two for the Bearcats. There he goes right up the middle, and I think he's going to get the first down. He did for a fact. That clock keeps on ticking, 2.44 to go in the third quarter. First and two for the Bearcats. Well, we're getting the uh, orders. Get play from the sideline. Uh, Cooper Callis is uh, ready to go now. Hands off to number 20. He gets a short yardage, not a very much uh, of a... Keep your composure, fellas. Cameron Ferguson, the ball carrier. A little frustration showing there from a couple of Falcon defenders. Watch our replay as this guy gets going to get thrown down to the ground right Official here. You can't do something silly and get a 15-yard penalty or get yourself ejected from the game. And I do believe we've got an injury timeout on the field. Let's take it with them. 
147 left in the third. Bearcats up 38 to three. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. And there's 147 remaining to play in the third quarter as the Bearcats get ready to move once more time. Handoff goes to the running back, mm -hmm. and uh, he gets plowed down uh, at the 34-yard line. 22. Game there, yeah. Caleb Pearson, a linebacker, 6'2", 210, redshirt freshman from Huffman Hargrave High School, Huffman, Texas. Came up and did a really good job of closing that hole down and making the tackle. Only about a one or two yard gain. Here's third and six for the Bearcat offense from the Falcon 34. Back to pass. No. Tried to throw the corner route out there on the far side. Good coverage out there by Number zero, Jocks, Jacques Tyler. Red shirt junior from Church Clemens in San Antonio. Defensive back, 5'10, 175 pounds. So now we got a fourth down and we'll see what they come up with. Try to kick a 51 yard field goal here. Logan Turner, number 16, with this attempt. A snap and it's up and it's good for that three points. For 16, Logan Turner with a 51-yard field goal. Yep, that was a high snap. Holder did a good job of getting it down, Jerry. Yeah, he did. There you go, and they got 41 points now with 30, uh, 38 minutes, uh, 38 seconds in this quarter. It's getting easier and easier for him. It looks like. Southwest Baptist field goal brings it 41 to 3. We'll be back in just a moment. Seconds remaining as the, we get prepared for the kickoff for the uh, Bearcats to the Falcons. They trail 41 to 3. Seven play, 14 yard drive, resulting in that field goal for Southwest Baptist. And the ball's in the air. Uh oh, number 15, the ball carrier, and he's right, getting some uh, trash out there, going from the uh, 20 yard line to the 50 yard line. That's Looks like he did it in about a half a second. Great run back there. Yeah, watch this block right there. There's two of them, and the kicker, kicker just overran it, and they got lucky that uh, good pursuit by one of their kickoff coverage guys. Hustling back to make the tackle. Falcons have the ball at their own 49. 
their best. This might be their best starting field position of the night, I believe. And Slow Norler made that tackle uh, for the Bearcats. You've got a timeout on the field called by UT Permian Basin. Let's take it with them. 28 seconds left in the third quarter. Bearcats up 41 to 3. to our game 28 seconds remaining to play in the third quarter 41 to 3 the Bearcats ahead of the Falcon first and 10 for the Falcons Graham looking to pass and he decides to run gets up around the 46 yard line of the Bearcats and runs out of bounds Tell you, Jerry, the edge pressure that's being brought by Southwest Baptist right now has given UT Permian Basin fits all night. And you can bet that they will look at that and try to find out how to shore up that edge rush coming from both sides. Graham's pass is complete. Pass complete to number 26, Corey Harris. It's first down. Injury timeout on the field. At the 41, at the 40 yard line of the Bearcats. Ball's gonna be spotted at the 40, yes. It's the uh, little slow coming off the field by one of the Falcons there. And that's one of their linemen. Tell if that's a 72 or a 73. Think it's a 72. And if that's the case, that's Jawan Callines. Graham with the running with the ball. Felt that pressure coming from his right side, Jerry. Just had to boogity boogity, as Barry used to say, all the way around the outside to the left. Oh, well, I like to say zippy dippy. There you go. And you know, when they do that, well, it, it does uh, kind of take a little of the, your brains out of you, I guess, when you're out there on the field and got all that equipment on you. Yep. End of the third quarter, our score 41 to 3, Bearcats.
Welcome back. Uh, 16, uh, 15 minutes to go now in the uh, final stanza. And the uh, Bearcats are leading the Falcons 41 to 3. Oh, nice throw. Good throw, good catch. That's a crossing route coming from the slot, Jerry. And he beat the defender all the way across the field. I think it's 13, I believe, is who this is. Good throw, good, good job of stepping up. He just beat the defender all the way across the field. And the quarterback put it on the money for a first and goal for the Falcons. There it is again. There's a touchdown. The number 89. That's a fighting As he held on for all of his might. And the touchdown is great, I tell you. Brock Johnson, a tight end. They've just had uh, they've just had some problems tonight. So it's it's good to see him get across that uh, special line tonight. Go, oh, yep. We're gonna bring in Roberts to kick the extra point. And Robert, uh, point after attempt, is good. So with 14.34 to go, it's the Falcons 10 and the Bearcats 41. Okay. Yeah, the band was pretty good. Uh, I fell in love with the band. Uh, I really like those guys. Yeah, they look good. <laughs> they they could play music. <laughs> Welcome back, uh, Fort. Welcome back at uh, 1434 remaining in the ball game tonight as the Bearcats uh, lead 41 to 10. They're getting ready to uh, receive the kick from the uh, Falcons. Let's see if Carson can get this all the way into the Picking end zone the here. And here he goes. And the ball will be a little shy at the five-yard line. Robert Weaver on the return. Number eight uh, for the uh, Falcons came up with that stop right at the... Uh, 22, 21 yard line, so more in that area. They'll say 23. The ball will the 22 yard line. First and two for the Bearcats. Now we're ready to go back to action. Bearcats uh, have the ball. Mm, nice play. Oh, man, Grandpa, he just he just decided to take off and uh, he didn't have anywhere to go. Yeah, lost back to the 20 yard line. 94, Dominic Varela, defensive lineman, 6'2, 275, a junior from El Paso Coronado coming in to make that play. Actually lost about three or four yards on the play. Three yards. Second and 13 from the Bearcat 20. Callis uh, looking around to see where he might go this time. And he just decided to uh, hand it off to number 26. <laughs> 35 for the Falcons in on the tackle. Eric Franco. Uh, 
5'11", 210-pound redshirt freshman linebacker from Fort Worth Nolan Catholic on the play. Game is seven, third down and seven. Quarterback for them is number 11 now. Let's see if I can get a name for you folks. While we're looking here, number 11 for them is Logan Claiborne. 6'2", 6'2", junior from Rockwall High School. They've got a first down after that completion. Pass complete number 17, chance to pull off. Yeah, first down up across the 35 to the 36 yard line. Nice throw and catch on a great, on a good route by the receiver number 17 there. Logan Claiborne, the uh, quarterback now. Chance Pillar on the catch there for Southwest Baptist. Hand up goes to number 26 and uh, he powers himself on around off the, over the 45-yard line. So we have a, have a first down there. There's a timeout on the field with the score 41 to 10 with the Bearcats in the lead. As play resumes, we have uh, 12 minutes and 14 seconds uh, to left in the uh, ball game this evening. And once again, the Bearcats uh, lead 41 to 10 over the uh, Falcons. Now we're getting ready for some more action on the field. Logan Claiborne is the quarterback now. He hands off the ball to 26. And he, he stays on his feet and Four keeps on three. going. And you'd think somebody would. Uh, there comes that flag. Uh, well, Tom Fuller going over in front of their bench about five or six yards on up the on up the field there. And somebody lost their temper. Looks like we're going to have a little personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty here. It'll be unsportsmanlike on UT Permian Basin. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense. It's going to bring it up 15 yards from where all that happened. See the referee explaining to Coach Kerrigan there why, why the penalties happen. Coach Kerrigan telling him he's giving him the business. And uh, Coach Kerrigan will let him know, hey, if you're going to let them guys do that, our guys are going to respond. And uh, we've got a media timeout on the field. Let's take it with them. 11.36 left in the game. Bearcats up on the Falcons 41-10. to 10.
turned out to be a beautiful night tonight at the stadium over here in uh, Midland. 11.36 remaining in our final uh, uh, 11.36 leaving uh, the in our quarter. <laughs> Ooh, little zone read look there, and he pulled the ball and just got hammered. Logan Talking about their quarterback. He said, hello, Mr. Logan Claiborne, and I'm going to put you down. Well, brought a little inside linebacker blitz. I'm talking about UT Permian Basin there. Number 35 for the uh, Falcons playing, playing Linebacker, that's Jill, uh, Eric Franco, 5'11", 210-pound redshirt freshman linebacker from Fort Worth, Texas. Logan gets the ball, hands it off to uh, number 25 once again. Or the ball Not much of a gain there. Good job by the interior of that Falcon defense. Especially okay, coming off the around. nose, I think that might have been number 97 for the for the Falcons there. Playing nose, Joseph Williams made the play. Third and 11. If the Falcons can hold them here. Now change the play from the sideline. Read the coverage in the formation defensively. Claiborne looking to pass. And the pass is complete to number 17. Number seven, Andre Robinson. Robinson, number seven, making the tackle for the Falcons. Gain of six. See if they decide they're going to go for it. Fourth down five. They are going to go for it on fourth and five from the Falcon 32. Up 41 to 10. So uh, Logan's going to bring him out one more time and see what happens. Looking at his coach and taking some uh, information. Looking again and taking some information. And now they decide, wait a minute, let's talk this over. South now, sorry, Jerry. Nine, nine, 19 before the half or before the ball game's over. 41 to 10 as the Bearcats are over the Falcons. Welcome back to 919 uh, left in the uh, game this evening, 41 to 3, as the Bearcats uh, are owning the uh, Falcons right now. He makes a little run to the, they're saying that they made a first down, but the referee is not saying that yet, so we wait. 27 uh, yard line. They're going to bring out the chains and maybe take a measurement here. It is going to be close, I believe. Yep. No, we might be able to see it here. Be close. I'll bring the chains from the far side. They're not in a hurry about that, are they? No, they're not. 
referee over there, one of the officials trying to figure out where to mark what yard line. They're going to put that down on over here and then pull, stretch those chains to see if they got the first down. Too many bodies down here for me to see whether they're going to get it or not. You can kind of see it better from... Well, from the referee south. says... Get the card out like they did a couple of years ago. They're going to give them the first down. They don't. And the ball Man. goes over on down. No, 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 no. They got the first did down. Did they get it? He signaled first down. Didn't he? He signaled first down. So they're going to keep the drive going here. This game has kind of crawled to a grinding halt here. 9-11 left in the ball game. So West Baptist out of Missouri up 41 to 10 on our UT Permian Basin Falcons. We appreciate you being here and uh, watching, whether it's on the delay or if you're on the uh, telecast on the live stream. Hello to all of our Falcons out there, Falcon fans and our Falcon alumni. We start the first ball game of the 2022 season. Pass is incomplete. Uh oh. And we got some we got some more pushing and shoving back here behind the play. Head referee threw this flag, so it was right in front of him. Let's see what he decides to call. Personal foul against Southwest Baptist. Personal foul yep. on the, the emotions are starting to run a little high, Jerry. Well, you, you can't help it, you know. You get a, you, you get in a game like this, and things are going so bad for you, uh, you just, you really don't know yeah. how to handle it. But if you're up 41 to 10, why are you making those type of penalties? Well, just keep know, the thing going. They, they probably just think that the, they're just fooling around now. You know, you got you got a lot of people in there that's not had been playing so far. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Good point. So let's see what happens. Mm. Nothing there. Not much going there. Nope. A lot of traffic uh, to get through, and he got through none. Victor. Adesui, the defensive lineman, the nose from uh, Dickinson, Texas, 6'1", 340. He's a sophomore. We're going to get to see him for a little longer in a Falcon uniform. Brought that ball carrier down. It's third and a bunch, 25, actually. So uh, Logan Claiborne's got a, a real job to come, come up with right now. We'll see what he decides to do. And going back uh, deep to pass, running now behind, <laughs> in a panic. And they drop him down at the 49 yard of the uh, Falcon. Tackle behind the line of scrimmage by number 34, Jalen Rockmore. And Rockmore making the play again for the Falcon defense. Jalen Rockmore coming to make the tackle. As Jerry said, all the way back to the Bearcat 49, and they're going to force Southwest Baptist to punt. It's 720 in the clock running. You can see it down at the bottom of the screen there. Gunner Asmick back deep to see uh, to receive. Here comes the snap, and the kick is good. Boy, they brought the house. And we'll see. They all did. They're four on one, and they decided. Well, he decided I'm going to just stand here. Now they're kind of fussing on one another. You know, exchanging uh, <laughs> pleasantries. Yes. <laughs> Phone numbers and addresses so they can send Christmas cards to each other, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ball's going to be out of bounds at the Falcon 33 yard line. That's where they'll take over first and 10. 7 04 to go in the fourth quarter. Clay will like this step. One of the normal 
one of the uh, prominent Southwest Baptist alumni is a guy by the name of Buddy Baker, not the NASCAR guy. He was actually the composer to the Apple Dumpling Game for Walt Disney 1 and 2. My goodness, a, 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 a pass is complete. Let me get his pass number. Good old number 11. And Little wide receiver screen. Number 11 is Clyde and again, He's got one wide open. And he'll pick up that first down out near the 45. Actually, a couple of yards more. Well, one yard on the 46-yard uh, line. First down. Back to pass once again. Oh, they're going to bring a... Penalty Late marker. flag, yeah. Penalty marker on the play. It's targeting, I think. Maybe. Might be targeting as the receiver went down. He's a little slow to get up right now. Number 11, Clyde Bellow, the wide receiver. 5'9", 160-pound sophomore from Deer Park. We've got an injury timeout on the field. Why don't we take it with them? 6.25 left. Bearcats up 41 to 10. Personal foul on the defense. First down. Welcome back, 625 remaining to play in the uh, fourth quarter, 41 to 10. The uh, Bearcats over the Falcon right now. Falcons at the 40, uh, 39 yard line of the Bearcats. Quarterback going to the air and it was good for the touchdown, I believe. Let's no. see what no. it flip, floated through his hands, did it? Hit the ground, knocked it loose. Boy, this was almost a great catch. Is that link down here? Nope, that's number six. Watch our Trans Global Productions instant replay. Just couldn't keep a hold of it as he went down. That's Malik Jackson, a 6'2", 210-pound wide receiver, sophomore from Taylor, Texas. I'm going to chunk it down there again. Oh, we're going to be Mark. It's a uh, turf right down there at the one-yard line. Base guarding. Clay thinks it's base guarding. We'll see. It's going to be interference. Be 15 yards back here from the line of scrimmage. Pass interference is the call. Watch here. Well, I'd like to see him score here because yep. that, that, that'll give him a, uh, a little uh, boost and make him feel better. Then a face guard me. Clay giving me the look. Giving me the call there. He saw it before I did. Well, first and 10 for the Falcons from the Bearcat 24 yard line. Grams and uh, Tilford in the background right now. And uh -oh. he's, he's going to be dropped for a loss back at the 31 yard line. Number four is the guy that, uh, yeah, Colton Smith is the one that knocked him down. So. Second down and 16 now. Grand pass is complete, and he worked it through, and guess what? Six points. It just zippy dippy. <laughs> Zippy dippy. Well, that's a wide receiver tunnel screen. Watch it on our replay. 
Quarterback looked one way. The guys got out here on the left and allowed number nine. That's Timothy Wiggins, the six foot, 180 pound wide receiver, a junior from Santa Clarita, California. Took that thing on up the, up the field to the north and got another UT Permian Basin touchdown. Carson uh, Roberts now had to attempt the extra point. It's up and it is good. So with 5.30 remaining to play the game, it's uh, the uh, Bearcats 41 and our good old Falcons 17. Great, great shot, guys. Point six carbs and ninety five calories. Welcome back. Five thirty to play in the uh, fourth quarter. Onside it here. It looks like it. And we're going to do an onside kick. Oh, somebody called timeout. <laughs> Man, Bearcats called timeout. They weren't ready for that onside kick there. Well, that'd give away the secret. Yeah, <laughs> sure did. <laughs> you know, so what you going to do now? Well, probably try the same thing. <laughs> I would. Oh, yeah. yeah. What do you like to lose then? 41 right. to 17 right now. That's right. I'd try anything. All right. Couple been, of, you know, it's, it's been a beautiful night here, though, regardless, you know. Had a little weather early yeah. to start with. Yeah, and then it just smoothed out, and the, the wind is just blowing lightly, and the, the air smells good and makes you feel good for every once in a while. So. Yeah. A couple of other notable alumni from Southwest Baptist, Roy Blunt, their Republican center for the state of, Min of, of Missouri. He was also one of their former presidents of this university. They've actually had 28 presidents preside over this, this university. Well, well, that kind of worked out for them, really, yeah. back inside the 30-yard line. And, uh, they'll set up at the 25. We have 528 remaining to play. Ben Bogard, one of their notable alumni. He was the founder of the American Baptist Association. Rod Jeton, a former speaker and Republican member of the Missouri House of Representatives, also a notable alumni from Southwest Baptist University. Well, I, I wonder, me being a Presbyterian, do you reckon that let me... Uh, finish my uh, education up there if I if you've got the money <laughs> I bet they won't say yeah, that's no. a, that's a true Baptist you got the money and here we go again yep. they come out uh, over the 30 to the looks like 33 yard line and uh, short of the first down second down short yardage that clock keeps on ticking.
I'd be real surprised if we saw a pass here, Jerry. I got a 41-17 lead. We're going to run the ball and get to the house so we can get that pizza and get on the road and on the bus. <laughs> That's right. You got a hard job tomorrow, so. Mm. Been on the end of some of these, been where you've been out of town and <laughs> taking the thump. They're winning, actually, but. That's a long bus ride if they took the bus from southwest Missouri, actually Bolivar, Missouri. <clears throat> they took the bus here. That's a long ride. If they flew, probably won't get out of here till in the morning. So my goodness. Probably spend the night at one of these fine hotels around the stadium out here tonight. Who knows? So here we go now. First and ten. Hand off right up the middle to number 22. Clock running at 3.50. Picked up about four yards there, second and six for Southwest. They're on 41 yard line. Now I need to mention that scoring drive, the last one, five plays, 67 yards, 30 of that was penalties. Took a minute 34 off the clock. Clay giving me that stuff so we could have it to share with our people. Claiborne handed the. Uh, no, he went off a far side over there. Logan Claiborne, the little zone read action. Well, he comes up with a first down anyway uh, at the uh, inside the 45 yard line. Claiborne looks back to pass. He's got a man that was, uh, he was covered just, just like snow. He had him covered. Snow, huh? Yeah. Are you thinking Good. about winter already over there? Oh, Mr. Logan? I well, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about going up there with them Baptists. Are you? <laughs> okay. Gets a little colder in Missouri than it does here. For the most part, you might see a little snow in Boulevard, Missouri. Second down and 10. Missouri, as Tom Landry used to say. Missouri. <laughs> Miami. Miami. Logan handed off at number 22. Uh, a little bit of uh, yardage there. Toyota. You used to say Toyota. Toyota. Third down. We got a timeout. Yep. A timeout on the field by UTPB with 238 left. Bearcats up on the Falcons 4117. Welcome back, 238 remaining to play, and uh, Logan at the uh, quarterback uh, slot right now, all alone. He fades back and throws the pass, and it is complete to number three, Curtis Couillard. Way to Hayden Kelly on the tackle for the Falcons from Magnolia, Texas. Well, I do know this. Curtis Cuillard is a uh, French name. So that was number three that just made that uh, reception. Wow. 
First and 10 at the 27 yard line for the Bearcats. They lead 41 to 17 over the uh, Falcons. Logan hands the ball off to number 22, and he's uh, making a little Williams, the ball yardage. Not much, but uh, enough to keep this thing rolling. Tackle made by Frank Bullipoa. 136 to go. Four, seven, six. Victor Adesui, number 99. We've called him or some name a couple of times tonight. He's the nose tackle for the Falcons. He's the one that kind of slid down the line of scrimmage there and made the play, but not before they made about four yards on first down. Logan uh, hands off the ball, but he was hit immediately. Same Almost guy. as soon as he got the ball, he he got the fall. The Same guy, number 99. Watch him come on our replay right there. He's just Jackal beating the center on that three. play and worked loss into the, the backfield to make that loss of about four or five yards back to the 28. We're down inside a minute. And that clock is ticking. Keep talking to your chief over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Logan uh, keeps a hold of the ball, heads right, right up the middle. We're down to 17 seconds. That's been a tough first ball game for our Falcons tonight. And uh, it's going to come up on short end. They've got to improve and Get ready to play next week. I believe we're back over here next Saturday. And that is the end of the ball game for tonight. The, the UTPB Sewell Family of Dealerships home game of the week of the uh, uh, of the week of the game, presented by Trans Global Productions, was produced and directed by Bob Bailey. Slow motion playback by Debbie Bailey. Press box cameras, Jason Barrage and Jess Jesse. Uh, Wigington, the end zone camera, Tim Reese, uh, Ross, uh, for Kyle Hubbard, Clay Kennedy, I'm Joey Lovell, and my lovely wife, Betty. And you be a good sport and have a great day.